This review of Room contains spoilers, however these spoilers don't reveal any more that wasn't already given away in the film's trailers. You have been warned. In 2014, Irish independent director Lenny Abrahamson made what I believe to be the best film of that year, Frank, a quirky, profoundly moving musical dramedy starring Michael Fassbender as a man with a strange talent for songwriting who also wore an elaborate paper mache head. Surprisingly, that concept is not incredibly mainstream, and it didn't have much commercial success or awards buzz despite being incredibly well received by most people who saw it, myself included. Abrahamson has decided to go a bit more mainstream with his next movie, and I don't use the word mainstream in an insulting sense, by the way. So his next movie is Room, which is based off the best-selling book of the same name. With a screenplay written by the book's author, Emma Donoghue, Room must surely be set up for awards success, as no one should know the material better than the author herself. This past week, Room picked up four Oscar nominations, including Best Picture, so it's clearly having some sort of impact. After a five-month delay from its US debut, the UK can finally see what all of the fuss is about. Five-year-old Jack lives with his mother, Ma, in a small shed. Jack has lived there his whole life, and he has never left the location which the two have dubbed Room, whereas Ma has been there for seven years after being kidnapped by a man she calls Old Nick, with only a lone skylight providing a look at the world outside of Old Nick's shed. Jack, having never seen the outside world, refuses to believe Ma when she tries to tell him about everything that's out there, and finds it difficult to communicate with him about the world beyond the television screen that he watches every single day. Ma Ma engineers a plan to escape, and Jack is key to the plan. But can the escape plan work, and even if it does, will Jack be able to adjust to life outside of Room? The most ambitious thing about Room, narratively, is that it takes place entirely from Jack's perspective. The movie opens on Jack's fifth birthday, and since we only see the world from his perspective, it means that we don't get a glimpse of the outside world until he does later on in the movie, save for the skylight in Room, that can only really offer a view of the blue sky above him. As a result, Jack considers Room to be the entire world, and he considers Old Nick bringing them supplies on a Sunday as some sort of deity who can bring them anything that they wish for. He watches TV and thinks that the different channels are planets, and he actively scorns his mother when she tries to teach him differently. Jack occasionally acts like a brat, for example in one scene where Ma tries to tell him about the real world and how she got into Room in the first place, she is pouring her heart out to Jack, but he refuses to believe her, and it's easy to see how audience members may find Jack initially grating, but as the movie goes on, it becomes understandable why Jack would behave like this. He doesn't know any better. He turns five, and all of a sudden his mother is telling him things that he genuinely cannot comprehend. I wish I was four again, sighs Jack when Ma suggests her risky escape plan to him. And Ma? God, where do I even begin with such a wonderfully realised character? Despite this terrible situation she finds herself in, thanks to the company of her son Jack, she's able to find the light side of things, and she tries to give him a fun upbringing, relatively speaking. But then that fun comes crashing down when Jack turns five and yells at her for not using her Sunday treat from Old Nick to get candles for his birthday cake. And when Ma tries to tell Jack the sequence of events that led to her kidnapping, Jack, her son, and her own only form of company berates her. I want a different story, Jack cries, but Ma snaps back, no, this is the story that you get. Brie Larson is incredible in Room, and you can feel her resolve being whittled down bit by bit as she tries to have a serious conversation with a five-year-old who doesn't know any better. It's frustrating to watch, but in a complex and sympathetic way. It's heartbreaking watching someone who has been punished because of their kindness, and Brie Larson deserves all of the accolades currently being heaped upon her for this performance. But most of the credit does have to go to young Jacob Tremblay, who has to portray an incredibly difficult character Character. I can only imagine what Lenny Abrahamson's direction must have been on set as he tries to explain these scenarios to this eight-year-old actor. Okay, Jacob, I want you to walk down these stairs, but your character has never seen steps before. And action. It blows my mind. Jack is the hero of the movie, yes, but Room also remembers that like any child his age, he can be greedy, he can be petty, and just a general nuisance. Jack ain't no Mary Sue, but the movie is all the better for it. Despite the overly sentimental trailers, Room is an often harrowing movie, with a lot of the trauma coming from seeing many events through the eyes of an impressionable young child, such as a scene early on when old Nick assaults Ma when she tries to defend Jack, as well as what 
what old Nick does to Ma on a nightly basis. Even Ma's plan to get Jack out of room is kinda selfish, but it needs to be done for both of them. The question does come up later on as to whether or not Ma should have given up Jack when he was first born so he wouldn't have to suffer in room, and the movie is smart enough to not overtly supply an answer. The first half of the movie takes place entirely in room, and seeing Jack and Ma go through their day-to-day -day routine is a roller coaster of emotions and is easily the highlight. In the second half, when the two do manage to evade old Nick and go out into the real world, it does take a slight hit in quality, but that's more of an indicator as to how great the first half was, as opposed to being an insult to the second. Essentially, Jack and Ma now have to adapt to life outside of room, with Ma having to come to terms with all of those lost years, the guilt of raising Jack in that environment, and returning to a world and family life that has changed beyond her understanding. But for Jack, it's much more interesting as he has to connect with his family despite never having met anyone new before. He has toys for the first time, but he doesn't know what to do with them. He is frightened by the prospect of the big wide world outside of the window. He's even afraid of pancakes when he's served them by the hospital staff. That should be an indicator as to how messed up Jack is. He's afraid of pancakes. Jack even finds himself missing room and wanting to go back there. And it's hard to blame him once you understand his mindset. That's his home. He's been taken from his home. Room is an incredibly smart and well-constructed movie that manages to show the world through the eyes of a child that has known nothing except the same four walls for the past five years and the impact that can have. The screenplay of Room is based around hidden depths and subtle gestures, and lines of dialogue and seeing Jack's journey manifest in this way allows for some hugely impactful moments, particularly with Jack's grandmother in the third act. There is some vagueness to the movie's second half, such as Jack's grandfather's resentment of him, but it works in the context of Room as it takes place from Jack's perspective. This is ultimately his story, and Room never leaves his viewpoint, so if Jack can't understand what's happening, then it's fair that the audience can't either. This does become a bit limiting at one or two points later on in the movie, but it's still a narrative decision that is handled extremely well, and is in keeping with the idea that Ma shielding Jack from the horrifying nature of their situation in Room may have done more harm to him than good, and bloody hell does Room get dark at points, but it also manages to be a very optimistic movie, and Emma Donoghue's script is well balanced enough to make both disparate tones fit together, with neither of them diminishing the other. And Lenny Abrahamson's direction is superb as well. It's not particularly showy or visually dynamic, but in terms of directing actors through powerful dialogue-filled sequences, he has done an incredible job. The first half of the movie does take place in this one room, and it doesn't even hint at a bigger world outside of it, yet it's still visually arresting to watch. Abrahamson does the Steven Spielberg trick in E.T. the Extraterrestrial by mostly shooting from low angles and looking up at most adults to visually show Jack's perspective, but it's in the few moments where Abrahamson decides to tilt the camera down and get low angles that provide some of the more interesting moments of the film. Abrahamson also reunites with Stephen Rinnix, who did the score for Frank, to provide a haunting, low-key musical track that emphasises the domestic. So, after all of that... Here's my conclusion. Over the coming weeks, you're going to hear a lot of people say that Room is an uplifting, optimistic, life-affirming movie. Those statements are true, up to a point, because Room is also a harrowing, haunting, devastating film, but those quotes don't look quite as good on an inspirational movie poster where the mother and son are smiling in a loving embrace. It's an incredibly mature and down-to-earth story about a mother and son that is not afraid to cast doubt on the whole enterprise and deliver epic moments and revelations in order to give the audience some food for thought. The cast are brilliant, it's smartly filmed, it's multi-layered, and while the first half of the movie is definitely the most interesting, the second half does deliver plenty of affecting moments, as well as an ending that metaphorically knocked me off my feet. I give Room four and a half stars out of five. Hey folks, thanks for listening to my review. You can find these reviews a day early on my website, so be sure to visit www.troby.com regularly where you can find a written version. I'm just experimenting with a new format, so let me know if you like these audio reviews to complement the written ones. Your feedback is greatly appreciated. But more importantly, what do you think of the film? Be sure to let me know in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe for more movie-related analysis. Please hit that like button as it really, really helps me out, and you can support my content through Patreon for exclusive perks and rewards and updates. I'll see you folks next time.